Kit, let me take you back to September the 20th and your first game in the dugout. One point from 21 on the board and the primary target for you was survival. Did you expect it to be as tough as the remainder of the season has been? Um, I mean, it seems like ages ago now, for, for starters. Um, yeah, I, I knew, I did know it was going to be tough. I can remember taking the under-21s at the start of the season, looking over at our squad and thinking, you know, we're going to find it tough this year. It's going to be a struggle in the championship. Um, and obviously then I, then I took over. Um, maybe sort of rose tinted glasses a little bit you suddenly think you can change the world and uh, and everything will just go swimmingly but you know also realistically I knew it was going to be very difficult and very tough um, at times I think it was probably even tougher than I'd anticipated um, in the end where we finished was probably about right to be perfectly honest um, but there were a few proper scary weeks leading up to the end of the season I think history says that you're the first manager in about 14 seasons that's kept a team in the league having got one point out of the first 21 available on the Yeah, league. yeah, we, we looked into to stats like that and it's they were quite worrying, you know, but um, also we had to keep very positive um, about the way we, we did our business and conducted ourselves and how we went about doing our work. Um, but the, the stats didn't look great when I first took over, you know, for us staying in the division, I don't know anything else. So it was, you know, we were up against it. It was going to be difficult. Um, but I got a lot of good people around me who, who helped me tremendously. And, um, you know, we stuck at it. We had to change some of my beliefs and principles towards the end of the season, certainly, and, and play a different way just to grind out results. And it was, you know, wasn't attractive, wasn't pretty, uh, but it got us the points that we needed. You've said that you needed wins and you mentioned that you didn't have much choice but to play open football because you needed those wins on the balls and you needed to score goals. But that came with conceding a lot of goals as well, which was obviously very difficult. And to have a, a record of conceding quite as many goals over the course of the, the months that you've been in charge must be galling, especially for you as a, as a defender. Yeah, it was. And it was, you know... I. I also, all my, all my teams when I was doing the 18s and 21s or my time at Palace or Colchester, I've always wanted to play um, attractive attacking football. But, you know, that's got to be from a solid base. Otherwise, it's sort of kamikaze, gun-ho stuff, and I'm not into that. Um, but at times, we almost had to gamble like that because, you know, we'd, like I say, with one point from 21, we had to go for wins. You know, we had to start getting three points on the board. Um, so and the first one away at Birmingham City seemed to give the team belief as well. There well, was it, such a palpable <coughs> sense of relief. Well, that first that one, game. yeah, that first win was was massive. You know, away from home, our away record over recent years has not been particularly good. Um, but obviously, that season or this the, the season we're talking about, we we hadn't had a win at all. So to get your first win away from home, and again, that was you know was a bit of a scrappy game and. You know, we conceded first, a, a good goal from, from David Cotter, if I remember. Um, and, you know, we were up against it, but we showed sort of decent character and resolve and, and fought back to get the win. And it was it was a great feeling and to get that first one was, was tremendous. And, you know, walking off and seeing our fans celebrate up there was, was brilliant. A couple of notable wins along the way. Uh, the one nil against Norwich, which again was another pivotal one because they were top of the league at the time. And 2 nil against Derby. Were, were grinding out results but playing the kind of football that, that you wanted to play although Norwich slightly nervy towards the end well that's right I mean we, we we were neither quite here nor there as a team in as much as you know we could play some good stuff at times and at times look a good side but if things go against us we became a bit flaky and a bit open um, but there were certain games I mean I think you know even right at the end of the season the Middlesbrough game as well we played quite an expansive style got a good win albeit without a clean sheet in that one you know conceding three goals but luckily we were able to score four and that to an extent probably sums us up a little bit this season though when we when we played that offensive way we got some really good players um, who can create chances and score goals but by playing that way we're, we're always look likely to concede as well and that's that's something I was very conscious of um, and we had to address as the season went on. So you brought in loan players to strengthen that defence and to give you more resilience at the back and the squad in general. But did, did those moves show you how unbalanced and unprepared the whole squad were was right at the beginning? That you talked about being a bit flaky. 
there were some good performances in those first games where actually when the team went behind, it, it was a kind of didn't know what to, to do almost. Um, well, it was. I think it's a, it's a knowledge of the championship. It's such a tough, you know, unforgiving league. Um, you know, you need people who are players who are able to deal with it and, uh, you know, prepared for it properly. And at the start of the season, I didn't feel that was the case. And it shows, you know, we had to bring in a lot of loan players and, you know, most of them were playing. So at the end of the season, we were sort of getting four, four or five loan players starting in our first 11. So that shows how much we needed them. And like you say, how unprepared we were at the start of the season. So on those lines, when it came to Norwich away, when there was essentially nothing to play for uh, as far as results were concerned, you still opted to play those lone players rather than choosing to sort of fill the squad full of a lot of the younger guys. What was the thinking behind that? Well, it was on the back of having beaten uh, Middlesbrough at home in what was a, a decent performance as well as a good result for us. Uh, and I wanted to finish the season as strongly as possible. Um, and it's you know it's playing that more offensive way again. It was again it was the, towards the end of the season. A lot of the games I was just grinding out results, and it, it wasn't pretty, it wasn't attractive at all. Being the last game of the season um, against Norwich, a good football inside, albeit a, a strong, physically athletic team as well. Um, I wanted to hopefully give our fans you know a good performance to cheer about, rather than go and maybe grind it out and. Would have been nice to have at least got a point and kept our unbeaten run going, you know, which was a five-game unbeaten run going into that Norwich game and and four games unbeaten away from home. So um, I, I did a I'm an hour a bit about it, um, and in in the end we were you know we were second best all over the pitch. They were they were far superior to us, which again shows I think the the gulf between the two sit teams this season. You know, two teams that both came down from the from the top flight. Um, and we need to learn our lessons from that for sure. Well, I think there were pretty much wholesale changes from the Fulham side compared to the Norwich side, which had remained relatively consistent from that time, from relegation. In terms of your younger players and the experience that they've gained this season and the way that they've developed both mentally and physically, a lot of them, what are your thoughts on them for next season and, and how much are they going to be part of your thinking to build this balance and blend of youth and experience going into I think it's it's been invaluable for for the young players, you know, to get to get this level of experience so early in their careers is fantastic for them. Um, what I was conscious of was I didn't want them to get hurt, and I also didn't want the club to get hurt, you know. So as much as yeah, the experience that they've gained is fantastic. If we had got relegated as a football club, it it could have hurt them individually, and it would have certainly hurt the football club massively. And that was that was my big fear. Um, now at the start it was it was realistic fear, but then obviously as the season went on and we got close to the business end of the season, it became very realistic. And um, you know we were in a scrap, we were in a, a relegation battle for sure. And um, it was important that the spirits remained high and the, the the mentality around the whole training ground remained strong. And, and we managed to do that, and that wasn't easy at all because you know I've been at clubs where it gets proper doom and gloom and I've been been at Fulham around the club when it's been doom and gloom um, and you allow that to happen and then you're almost asking for trouble and it's uh, uh, you can almost tempt fate and bring it on yourself a little bit um, but we, we kept the mentality strong and the, the atmosphere around around Motspur was brilliant all the time and you know you wouldn't know we were a club fighting for lives if you'd have come in and, and seen seen the training been around the canteen things like that and that was that's full testament to to the people we've got working here, and that that gave us a chance of staying up, which you know, which we took. On to the future, a number of players are coming out of contract now, um, and you've talked about making changes to your squad to get the squad that you believe is right for the championship. What does that involve over the summer months? An awful lot of hard work. There's going to be numerous meetings uh, with agents which started already. Uh, you know, Mike Regan, Alistair McIntosh. Uh, permanently in meetings at the moment with uh, agents of, of our existing players um, and also of, of, of potential uh, players who could be coming in you know it's a busy time there's meetings all over the place and contacting other clubs and, and, and players and agents and things like that it's, there's an awful lot of work to do now we'd like to get quite a bit of work done as early as possible. How realistic um, is that given that the market is such a 
a difficult market to, to trade in, not only in January, which is in, in incredibly difficult, but in the summer months it is too. Yeah, it, it is difficult because, you know, ideally everybody wants their business done as early as they can, but, you know, quite quite often players will have two or three clubs they could potentially go to and play one off against the other a little bit. And that, that sort of thing does go on, obviously. So, But the fact we're, we're well prepared, we've got a good strategy in place, um, and we're starting our business now looking to do it, it gives us a chance. So hopefully if you can get even get one or two over the line early, that takes the pressure off, then you can get, get on with the work with the other boys. But yeah, we, we'd, we'd like to be, we're certainly doing all the work now. And like I say, the, the other guys over there are very, very busy um, and good. I think that's how football clubs should be in the close season. It's not a time for people to down on tools and get on their sunbeds. Uh, it's, it's a time when people do their real work, I think. So we're certainly, that's in place. And I'm quite happy with the structure we've got in place. And I say we've got a we've got a plan, and she needs everyone to stick to it now. And I know that you speak regularly with the chairman, and that you will be speaking at length with the chairman in the next few days. He is fully supportive. The ambition from him to you. What what what, what can you tell us? He's been brilliant. He's been incredibly supportive um, of everything we've tried to do. Um, he's hurt a bit during this season, and, and obviously the relegation from last year. Uh, but he's he's very very ambitious and wants the club to be driven forward, and he he's right behind that. And as an um, owner, he deserves that success, given the level of investment and the aspiration when he first took over. For no, him. he does, he does, and I'd I'd love to be I'd love to be the person that delivers that that first bit of success for him to see at, at Fulham. You know, I've I've experienced great times with this football club as a player, um, and they they were some of the best times of my of my career and of my life, and I'd like to to revisit them now as a manager and, and to give Mr Khan a little taste of that, you know, which, I, as you say, I think he deserves. It's too early to start talking about names and personnel and people going and, and staying, but tell me, what does Kit Simon see his starting eleven and his squad look like at the beginning of next season, on August the 8th, when the season kicks off? What can we expect? I think it'll be, it'll be very different to the team that kicked off this season. That's 100% sure, there's no doubt about that. And I think I'd, you know, what I'd be looking at is to get a, a, um, a, a solid, dependable team out there that that we can rely on and trust, um, that have that experience and that know-how about Championship football. Uh, again, like I say, I like playing creative, attractive football, but it's got to come from that solid base, and that's that's vital. And we need to, you know, the squad needs to be assembled with that in mind, you know, to be fit for purpose to get us up the league and be challenging in, in a championship. And I know you'll talk to us regularly over the summer, so good luck with the business end. Thank you very much.